Defined benefit plans, on the other hand, is a different setup. So what a defined benefit plan is, is that there's an, agree there's an agreed benefit that is going to be paid to that employee upon retirement. Now, the way that that is defined, and that's why it's a defined benefit, so the benefit is defined. The way that that benefit is defined is generally, actually not just generally, it's one component of that, and it's usually quite a complex formula, but one component and an important component of that is your salary at the end of your working life. So however much you're getting paid right at the end, they, you, they put that into a formula with a number of other things, and that's how much money that you're going to get out in your super. It has nothing to do with how the market is doing. So in that case, the risk doesn't fall on the employee. The employee is going to get, and I'm going to put a just, if you asterisk out, little caveat that it's a little bit more detailed than that. But generally, the risk doesn't fall on the employee. The risk falls on the entity because if things end up worse, they may have to put in more to make good. And I'm I'll draw it up and it may make a little bit more sense. So, uh, hang on, piece of paper. Okay, so define contribution plan. Oh, it's a bit, no, that's right. So, we've got you, the employee. Can you tell? Drawing is one of my fortes. So we've got the company, and we have the super, super, uh, superannuation fund. Now, you do, through the year, and you work. Now, you're going to get paid, let's say just 100 bucks, just most, could be $100,000, whatever. You get paid cash to you during that period of time. So that's fine. The company will put in, and the, the, the required rate in Australia is 9%. They are looking to increase that over time. I think it's up to about 15%, but at the moment it's 9%. So the company will put money into a super, superannuation fund, and they'll just keep on doing that. Now, if you're looking on slide, not the defined benefit slide, but the de defined contribution slide, the obligation for the company is limited to them making at least whatever they said they're going to put in. So if they said they're going to put $9 in and they only put $7 in, their obligation is $2 and they would have a liability for that $2. But as long as they're putting their $9 in, there's no liability sitting for them at all. They're okay. Now the fund then goes off and invests that. Now you do get some say in that. You can choose to say, look, I want it to be high growth so it's going to be probably more, more um, equity type asset classes, you could ask for a cash-based asset class, you could ask for something in the middle. But ultimately the fund goes off and invests that in a range of assets. Roll forward 30, 40, 50 years, who knows. You get, and just for argument's sake, let's just do it as an easy lump sum. You get a lump, of, lump sum of money at the end there. Now that sum of money is contingent on how much money came into here and how well they invested it. That's all that it's dealt with. The thing which is defined is that $9. That's the defined part of it because that's defined on your salary as you're rolling through and as they're putting the money in. But in terms of who bears the risk, if the fund, if your fund manager is just bad, and there are some bad fund managers out there, if, he's, if he or she is bad, if the fund is just unlucky, if it's just bad economic environment at this point in time, whatever reason, if that number ends up smaller than you would have liked, that's bad luck. That's, that's what you're getting. Over here, that's not an issue they have to deal with. As long as they put in their $9, that's what they're required to do. Now, define benefit plan. There's you again. There's your company. You work. You get paid. Company puts in nine dollars. That actually works exactly the same. So I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, but 
we were having a chat about this earlier today. Rob is mainly um, defined contribution. I'm mainly defined benefit. So we actually, in terms of the process of, you know, two of us, we work at the same place. You know, he does get a little bit more than me, but um, we work, we get paid. The university puts X amount of money into the super fund, and I think we're in the same super fund. That, that process works the same um, regardless of if it's defined contribution or defined benefit. The fund then goes off and invests that money. That's pretty much the same. What is different though is this next bit. Because the amount that I'm going to get there is defined. That benefit, if you're looking on the defined benefit slide, um, the entity's obligation is to provide the agreed benefits to the current and former employees. So that number is actually a defined amount, and it's defined, as we talked about earlier, on quite a convoluted formula, but the main one being how much my, how much my salary is. So it doesn't matter if the, if the bottom falls out of the market. And that was one thing I didn't really pay much attention during the GFC as share markets moved and people were talking about superannuation. My superannuation fund just, like my balance just kept going up because it's not linked to the market at all. It is just linked to how much, how much I'm paid. Um, and to the extent that how much I'm paid is staying, is growing very slowly, my superannuation balance grows. Um, so, and that's fine, but there's a wrinkle to this tale, which is if what I'm getting is fixed, but if these guys are investing, and maybe they're good, invest, maybe they're good investors, but the market has just fallen through, they may actually have, they may owe more money to all the people like me than they have sitting there. And if that's the case, the company, has, the company is then obligated to put, potentially obligated to put money in. So that's why the accounting for defined benefit plans is a little bit trickier because what they have to do, and we'll look at the slides in a sec, what they have to do is look at the fund, what they call um, the fair value of plan assets. And then they've got to look at the present value of the defined benefit obligation. So basically, you know, in essence, the assets of the super fund and the liabilities of the super fund, and then figure out, is there a shortfall there? Now, the fair value of the plan assets is a reasonably, depending on the asset classes you're invested in, is a reasonably easy thing to calculate. Because you know, if they're involved in equities, then you can get equity values and, and so forth. The present value of the defined benefit obligation is very much not easy to figure out. Because think about it, if you've got 100,000 superannuation members in a defined benefit plan, and they are ranging from retiring next year to 40 years out, and then trying to figure out what their, what their, their pay is going to be, if they're going to survive to that time, what the payout's going to be, like, that's a really complex set of, set of calculations. And that's why God, invent, God invented actuaries, because we need people like that to figure that stuff out. Like, that's not stuff we're going to be worried about. But in essence, you just want to get kind of a number, number, and then compare the difference and see if you've got a shortfall, um, which we're not going to be worried about in this subject. But there is some more details, and I want to show you some information about Qantas in a sec. So come back to the laptop. What time is it? Okay, so under its defined benefit scheme, more than 13,000 former and present Qantas workers are guaranteed fixed payouts when they retire despite the collapse in returns from financial markets. So that's just talking about what I've just been mentioning here. Regardless of what happens, and I, well, actually a caveat, supposedly regardless of what happens, the amount workers get under defined benefit plans should be relatively guaranteed. Now, it's not so guaranteed as I've unfortunately just found out. So Unisuper, so this was in the, this was in the Australian last year. Um, Unisuper says there is no risk it will reduce member benefits, but that guarantee only applies to 2013. Now, it's 2013 now. Came home, I didn't get my mail redirected when I went overseas, I thought, you know, the only things I ever get are bank bills and other things which aren't that interesting, so I thought, well, bugger it, I'll just leave them coming to my address in Australia. Get back home and there's a big stack of mail, including one from Unisuper. So, okay, we'll have a read of this. And 
Unisuper says there was no risk it will reduce member benefits, but that guarantee only applies to 2013. Well, they're actually pretty spot on with that because what that letter said was member, member benefits were being decreased. So they were actually changing the formula for the way they calculated my payout, and obviously not just mine, but other people's as well. And that actually, in pretty much every case, was going to lead to a reduction in our pay or in our final payout. So because of the headwinds in the financial markets, they did actually make a decision to drop the amount of money that I was going to get. At the moment, it doesn't seem like it's going to be a huge amount, but it's not anywhere near sort of the utopia that I thought defined benefit plans were. I thought it was absolutely guaranteed that, you know, they figure it out, I can't get touched. It's not the case. Um, but it's still less risky 